you can become high status even if you are broke. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can do that. I'm gonna break down for you what status is, because it's not what you think it is. I'm also gonna break down a strategy that you can use to raise your status, even if you're broke, even if you're short, and even if you have very white, milky, pale skin like me. And during the course of this video, you are also gonna learn why money is really not that important. So let's talk about status, uh, what it means, and why it's important. Status, the definition I can remember, is the attention, deference, and influence that a person commands in a community or a social group. That's basically it. I used to think that status was some alpha bro buzzword. Didn't think it was all that important. Turns out I was wrong. Not only is status real, you can observe its effects, not only in humans, but also in different animal social groups. It's also important, especially to a man, because men specifically who are low status have much harder lives in general. They're less attractive to, to everyone pretty much, not just like sexually, but also socially. They're paid less, they're respected less, and they're also more likely to experience depression, anxiety, addiction, chronic stress, and they're also like, more likely to die earlier. So needless to say, raising your status as a man will improve your life in every conceivable area. And most of the advice you actually read online, not only does it all sound the same, it's all about like grooming yourself and earning a bunch of money and wearing a suit, it also helps you build status, yeah, but the wrong kind of status. Yes, there are two kinds of status, and I'm not just making this up, this is from the University of British Columbia, this was research that was done back in 2013, as well as a bunch of supporting studies over the years, that suggests that there are two types of status. And to explain these two types of status, one way that I like to think about it is thinking of two different types of chimp. Okay, stay with me on this, I'm going somewhere. Chimp A, chimp B. Chimp A is a chimp and his name is Titan. And he's a big chimp. He's an aggressive chimp, he's got scars on his face. And he's the strongest chimp in the group. One day, Titan decides, I wanna be the alpha dog, or the alpha chimp. So he starts puffing his chest out and he starts throwing his weight around. He starts getting aggressive with everyone. He starts intimidating everyone. He starts making everyone afraid of him. This works. He becomes the alpha, not through being chosen. He wasn't chosen to be the alpha, but he, he got there through force, coercion and intimidation. He was, a, he was successful. So Titan was enjoying being the alpha chimp for a while. He had his pick of the women, the lady chimps. He ate before everyone else and he was having a good time. That was until one night, all the other chimps decide that they are done with Titan's bullshit. They're done putting up with this tyrannical dictator. So one night, while Titan's asleep, a group of 10 other chimps gang up on him and they rip him to bits. This kind of stuff happens in the chimp world all the time. It's pretty brutal. That is chimp A. High status, but this is how Titan did it. Now, what about chimp B? Chimp B is a chimp called Sage. Now, he's not particularly strong. He's not particularly big. He's not particularly intimidating. In fact, he's a bit of a wimp. But what Sage does have is a very different skill. Sage is the most socially intelligent chimp in the group. Not only is he able to diffuse conflicts when they emerge, he's able to bring the tribe together like a group. He's like this social glue that keeps the entire group together. He's very sociable. He's able to connect with other chimps. He's very, he builds very reciprocal relationships. He grooms and gets groomed back. He's very well liked in the community. He's also conventionally very intelligent and wise. He's able to use tools and he teaches the use of tools to all the other chimps in the group. This raises his status considerably. And the alpha in the group, at the time, passes away. Very sad. And what happens? All the chimps decide that Sage is like the beating heart of this entire chimp group. We want Sage to be our leader. Sage becomes the leader and he has a peaceful reign as the leader. He's beloved by all the chimps. The entire group benefits from his leadership and eventually he passes away peacefully. Both chimps achieved status 
but they did so in two very different ways. Titan achieved status through what anthropologists call dominance, whereas Sage achieved status by what anthropologists call prestige. And what I see online is that most of the advice you get does not seem to even be aware of the two different types of status, but all this advice seems to be centered around building dominance. It's stuff like get jacked, never break eye contact first. When you shake hands with someone, shake hands and grip really tightly and assert your dominance. This is a bad long-term strategy. Yes, it might help you increase your status. It might help, it, you might even get laid from it. You might get a promotion or two or whatever. But the problem is you don't develop real, healthy, genuine relationships. People defer authority to dominant leaders, not because they want to, but because they're afraid of the consequences of what's gonna happen if they don't. The people around you fear you. And because dominant leaders tend to be manipulative, narcissistic, coercive, intimidating, and aggressive, those people also don't like you either. And on this channel, we're all about becoming men who have healthy, genuine relationships. And for that reason, we are gonna focus on prestige as a way to increase your status. Prestigious leaders tend to be social, they tend to be conscientious and they tend to have high self-esteem. So dominant leaders are selfish, as in they put them, their own needs first at the expense of other people's needs, which is why the chimps killed Titan in the end. But prestigious leaders, they, put, they, they consider the needs of the group in the broader picture, okay? It's not as if they trade their own needs for the needs of others because then they become like a people pleaser. But what they do is they look for the win-wins, the things that improve their lives while simultaneously improving the lives of the people around them as well. But when it comes to building prestige, there's a bit of a problem. You can build prestige by basically becoming amazing at something and then sharing that skill with other people. But let's say, for example, you become an amazing world-class chess player. That doesn't necessarily mean that that skill, that prestige in that one area translates to another area. If you're a world-class chess player, you're still gonna be just another dingus at the club it doesn't necessarily translate. So what do you do? Like, how do you know which skill to pick? And is it even worth it? Why would you build one skill if it's just gonna take so much time and energy that you're just neglecting everything else? Is there, oh, oh if only there was actually a way of building a kind of prestige that translated across every domain that you'd likely find yourself in. Luckily, there is. You do this by building something called universal prestige. And how do you do that? You do this by building your social skills. Better social skills raises your prestige in every single social environment you'll find yourself in. And the cool thing about social skills when you build them, it doesn't require you to, it, like it, it's, it's context independent. You have, it, you have those skills with you all the time. You can put yourself in any social environment and automatically your status is gonna be higher. To build your social skills, there's three core areas I want you to focus on. Number one, back when I was doing pickup, back in the day, I was walking around the streets, approaching women, talking to women, I learned a pretty painful lesson. No matter how hard I tried to convince women when I went up to talk to them that I was this super smooth James Bond dude, it seemed to be like the harder I tried, the colder the response would be. And this is because you can't fake confidence. This is why most of the stuff I teach on this channel is all related to improving your self-esteem and fixing your inner world, your beliefs, your emotional health, that kind of thing. The first step is the most important and that's to do the inner work on yourself. I'm talking about finding your purpose. I'm talking about developing a stronger sense of identity, a strong frame, a strong reality. I'm talking about learning your values and fixing those negative beliefs that are sabotaging everything in your life. And by the way, click the link in the pinned comment down below because you can download a free journal that I created for this very reason. Number two, now let's say you've got high self-esteem. Now you actually need to learn how to talk to people or you need to improve this skill. This is the area that I actually focus on the least. I've always focused on it the least because I often find that when you fix the inner, your inner world, conversation just flows more naturally. But this is actually a missed opportunity for me because things like banter and humor and holding good conversation like flirting, that kind of stuff. These are all skills that you can build and this will make a difference in your social skills practically overnight. Number three, what I'm about to share with you 
will raise your status practically within a week. I guarantee it. So back when I was living in Lisbon, Portugal, I mean, I'm in Kuala Lumpur right now, but when I was living in Portugal, I was pretty lonely for a bit. I didn't really know many people. So what I decided to do was I decided to eventually jump on um, a website called meetup.org and start a men's group. So, I, and to my surprise, tons of guys showed up to these meetup groups. Suddenly, I went from feeling lonely, being alone in my apartment, playing video games, to leading groups of men in events and being a fairly well-known event coordinator in a really nice city. So if you want to boost your status, do the same thing. Become a leader. Instead of waiting for the right group to show up, create your own group on Meetup or Facebook events or whatever. Once you've started to create events and get some people going, what you can also do is invite different groups to new events. So let's say, for example, you go in climbing and you're meeting some people while you're climbing. Then why not invite the people that you meet when you're climbing to the people that come to your meetup groups or to your dance class or whatever. And suddenly you are now a source of fun. You're a source of positive vibes in people's life. You are giving value. Suddenly you're the reason why your friend and this other woman hooked up and, and got in a relationship. You're the reason why this guy got a job because he spoke to someone else at a different meetup group. So without spending any money, you are now a value provider for people. And by being this, you are raising your status without it costing you any money. But none of this means anything if you are stuck in life and if you are passive and if you can't take action. So with that in mind, you need to learn how to get moving. So click this video next because I'm gonna break down for you how you can go from being passive in your life to becoming an active participant. It's a really good video. Click this one next and I will see you in the next video. Peace.